Yo, it's Tug from We Make Best, and we're back with another one of our infamous deck techs. And in today's video, we're going over Zephyr Needle Katsu. So, for those who don't know, Zephyr Needle is a one-handed ninja weapon dagger that says once per turn action. When we pay one, we can attack for two, go again. But if Zephyr Needle is defended by a card with block value greater than Zephyr Needle's power, destroy it when the combat chain closes. Now, I know what you're all thinking. Tog, they'll just block our Zephyrs and destroy our weapons. How is that good for us? But the thing is, we're actually using the Zephyrs as bait. We do this by baiting our opponents into blocking our daggers instead of any of our important combo line cards. Then, we built our deck in the way that if we can land any of these combo line hits, we can pretty much set up a guaranteed OTK turn right that instant. We can do this in multiple ways, such as double bonds turns, Mugenshi Lord of Winds combos, Art of War turns, or my personal favorite, landing a guaranteed dishonor hit on our opponent which against most heroes just wins the game on the spot so once we figured all of this out we got straight to testing and then we realized not only does this strategy work super well but there's actually a lot more benefits to running zephyrs over kadachis than we first anticipated just heaps of small things like against aggro decks they don't really want to block it anyway so we're just getting double the damage that we would if we were running kadachis instead also the two power becomes super relevant against frailty tokens as well as being super relevant against drone to kill the bigger dragons just off of a blue then other niche things like the zephyr baiting in the blocks usually resulted in us being able to break all of our opponent's equipment in the first two turns and then on top of all of this outsiders also gave us concealed blade to allow us to re-equip our daggers to mitigate the downside of zephyr needles anyway but this downside that we're already turning into an upside just means that concealed blade is just a strict upgrade to the deck in that sense and speaking on strict upgrades another strict upgrade is being able to run three twin twisters because it actually has multiple uses. Uses like comboing off of our three spinning wheel kicks. Also, it's just a simple one for four go again to force a Katsu trigger for ourselves. But then also we can use it for the plus one power on hit to again bait blocks from our opponent. But if they don't block, now we can buff our Zephyr Needle to a power that they'll need a D-React to destroy it, which is just insane value for us. So with all of that, as you can see, Zephyr actually has a lot of viability when you build around it. But that's it for the Zephyr. Let's go over the rest of the deck. So starting with the equipment, we're going to be running breaking scales to even further the difficulty for our opponents to block our on hits We run breeze riders over snaps because breeze is going to allow for literal OTKs by giving all of our combo attacks go again As well as having that one extra block that comes in handy quite often Next up is the Hind Cross Strap. We've found it to be better than Tunic in most circumstances due to giving us access to free surging strikes on the turns that we use our Zephyrs as bait, leading to our game winning turns. And then lastly, we run Mask of the Pouncing Links. This is because we can use the Pouncing Links to guarantee our massive combo turn on demand, as well as Mask of Momentum not having as much value since we don't have the Kadachis. And now for the main board, it's pretty stock standard with a couple of exceptions. We run one extra blue Bonds and one yellow Whelming as search targets for our Pouncing Links. We also have the Mugenshi main to allow for the Lord of Wind combo turns when we want it. Again, we have Twin Twisters because of its synergy with both Spinning Wheel Kick and Zephyr Needle itself. Then we also have a couple rays of Reflexes since our deck is built to kill with our certain on hits landing, but also because we can use it on the Zephyr to bait out the block while keeping the Zephyr around. And then lastly for our sideboard, we have Flick Flax because it's a broken card this meta, Reinforce for the Dominate decks, then Cyclone, Remembrance and Floating Dojo for Oldham and Assassin decks. Then we have a couple extra equipment pieces like Tunic for the longer games, a Kadachi for our first re-equip of Concealed Blades, a Mask of Momentum for Dromai, Tide Flippers for some AB, and a third Zephyr for Swag. But that's it for the deck tech. Any questions about the list, hit us up in the comments. Otherwise, let's get into this gameplay. So as you can see, we're up against the boogeyman of the format currently, Lexi. So I lost the Dyro and I'm going first. Here my hand isn't the greatest, so I'm happy to just pass priorities to see if they want to load in an arrow, and then we can look to punish. But the Lexi doesn't want to risk it, so they let us go to Arsenal, we throw our Art of War in there and pass it over. Over to Lexi, they have a four card hand. They pitch a blue to Voltaire, load in a red withering shot and swing in for five, go again, on hit frailty. But like I said in the deck tech, Zephyrs get around this frailty token, so we actually don't care. So all good, take five down to 35. Then they load in a pathing helix and attack for five. Doesn't have go again, so we don't care again. Go down to 30, Arsenal, pass it over to us. So over to us, we have an easy dishonor line here. So looking to bait the Lexi into blocking our Zephyr needles. So pitch a blue, attack for one go again through the frailty they block nice now i'm going to swing with the other one to bait them in again they take the bait block it out and then i activate cross straps to attack for four with my surgeon strap they quickly say no blocks taking four down to 36 
We follow up with a yellow descendant for four, go again, which also hits. We trigger mask to go grab our dishonor. Then we attack for three with bonds and end on dishonor, forcing Alexi to full block out or pretty much lose on the spot. So after this turn, we got to leak 11 damage and time off our opponent there while maintaining a powerful card in our arsenal to follow up with. Set up our graveyard for future bonds triggers and we did all of that through a frailty token with just yellows in our hand. But now we pass it to them and they pass us straight back. So back to us, we swing with a red surgeon strike for five go again they double block it for six so we can't cheese them with our art of war here but no problem since they've used two of their cards to block we just follow up with a blue whelming gust wave for two go again on hit draw here they block for three but now we can cheese them out using the art of war and breaking scales to buff it up to four so we play the art of war banish the hundred wins draw two and we draw into a bonds and a concealed blade i look to use the breaking scales which in hindsight i definitely should have because that will allow me to use the concealed for either a katsu trigger or a blue to allow me to either double bonds or or full Magenchi line them with Art of War. But I just got baited because it's so satisfying being able to re-equip a weapon. So all goods, I did that instead. Re-equip a Kadachi and draw into a Lord of Wind. Then we just trigger the Katsu, pitching the Lord to find us 100 wins because we're just looking to get as many attacks on the chain as possible to maximize our Art of War turn here. So then we follow up with Bonds for four go again, banishing a Lord of Wind. They take four down to 24. Then we go 100 wins for four. Again, they take four. Then we end on a Lord of Wins for three, putting them down to 17 to end our turn. Then we pass it over to them on just a two card hand. So now the life totals is 17 to 30 with them going back to their turn with only one card in hand. And all of this came because they blocked our two Zephyr swings on turn two. Insane. But anyways, over to them, they just play a yellow Winter's Bite, which is pretty annoying because this will put us on a three card hand, but it's fine. So we just pitch a yellow Bonds to the Winter's Bite and then they pass it to us. So over on our turn, we just pitch this Art of War to attack with Red Surgeon for five go again. If they let this hit, I'll go fetch a Whelming Gust Wave. But if they block it out, I'll just arsenal this flick flat. So no good way for the opponent to block here. They decide to double block it, so nice for us. We hurt their turn significantly while arsenaling the flick flag, pass it to them. Lexi's turn, they're obviously desperate to try and claw back into this game by playing an Art of War off of Tunic on a three card hand. They then load in an Endless Arrow and swing for five, go again. But sadly for them, I get to clean block five with my scales and flick flag. Then they follow up with a loaded drill shot and swing in for six. I wanna get the flick value here, so I'm just deciding on which combo card to block with. I decide to block with a spinning wheel kick and breeze rider boots. I block with the boots here just to deny the drill shot on hit. So all up, we only take one down to 29. They pass it to us. On my turn, since they don't have an arsenal, if I can force them to block here, they'll really hurt their next turn as well. So that's why I actually kept 100 wins here over the spinning wheel because I thought they would be more baited into blocking. So we swing in with the 100 wins for three. They don't block. Ah, well, we'll just follow up with the Kadachi pitching this razor, putting them down to 13. Arsenal the other razor, pass it over. Over to them, they have four cards. Pitcher blue to load in a searing shot for four go again. We have a game ending hand, so we don't care about anything that doesn't disrupt us. So no blocks, take five down to 24. Then they load in a pathing for four go again. Don't care, take that as well down to 20. Then they load in a drill shot and attack with that as well. Take that as well, down to 16. But all good, we got to keep our whole hand. So the game's pretty much over now. They pass it to us. We lead off with a Kadachi for one, which they take down to 12. We then follow up with a be like water for three go again. They snap block it but we have the razor from last turn so we do that they take three down to nine we rename it to surgeon strike fetch a bonds of ancestry from the katsu trigger and follow up with a descendant for five go again and then the opponent throws in the tower gg so as you can see with this build we can heavily punish opponents that get baited into blocking the zephyr needles but also if they just take the damage we're just dealing twice the damage we would have with kadachis anyway but like always deckless in the description and thank you for watching to the end but we adding peace